And the New Age movement will really make this uh, pronouncement that Christianity for 2,000 years has been hiding from us the reality that we are God. That there's been this insidious um, attempt uh, to, to hide from us um, this, this whole understanding of what it means that I would be God. So, what do they do? Well, they have all kinds of practices and techniques. And in the New Age movement, again, you can choose anything that you want. And that's the beauty of it. That's the excitement of it, that you create your own religion. Because ultimately, you are God. And so, whatever it is that you would decide to, to use is going to be your way of, of going inside yourself. So, they will take aspects even of Christianity... And so they would use Psalm 96 in particular as one that is, that is well used to say, uh, be still and know that I am God. Right? So we interpret that as God speaking to us. Be still and know that I am God. But what the New Age movement says is that if I am still, then I will know that I am God. <laughs> Clever, isn't it? Eh? Very subtle but very insidious. It's saying the very, the very same lines, the very same words are being used. But one is, I'm God. And again, if I can come to this place of quiet, this place of stillness, of this, of this inner knowledge of who I am, then I'm going to see the truth of, of who I am, that I am part of this God. And so they talk about a cosmic Christ. So they say, well, this Jesus guy was somebody who did have some enlightenment and maybe more than some of us. So he was enlightened. So he would have been like Buddha or Muhammad. But we are all Christ. That's what they would say. We are all, we are all God. We are all Christ. We are all these spiritual beings. And again, the more we can unlock the knowledge of that, the more we will see who we are as God, and maybe we can even move to that level of where Jesus or Buddha or Mohammed would be. So what are some of the practices? And um, this is where I usually get into really a lot of trouble. So um, I, I'm hoping that because there's a couple of priests here to defend me that you're all going to be very nice. But this is what's in the document of Jesus Christ, the bearer of the water of life. And these really then are not my ideas that I'm giving you, but coming from um, this really beautiful document. So we have the Enneagram, yoga, mantras, tarot cards, parapsychology, Jungian therapy, Zen, Reiki, Buddhism, crystals, TM, transcendental meditation, uh, herbal medicines. Herbal medicines. Uh, drug therapies, some drug therapies, reflexology, hypnosis, therapeutic touch, homeopathic medicines, surprisingly maybe, astrology, horoscope, horoscopes, biofeedback, massage therapy. These are some, are just some of the practices that constitute what it means to be new age. And again, my brothers and sisters, the simplicity of it is, is that through all of these practices, there is this attempt to go inside, to see who in fact I am, to unlock the secrets of my personality, and again, in that knowing of who I am, I see that, that I am God. And again, this is the, the bottom line on the whole thing. I'm not going to say much more about the specifics of that. I hope that I've been able to separate that enough about the rejection of Jesus and his church and the reason why we do that and the attraction of what New Age is all about, that I can create my own religion and that, in fact, in this new religion, I'm God. So that is what makes it so attractive. And then we're taking whatever you would want from... Christianity, from Buddhism, from Taoism, from anything that you would want to create your own spirituality, your own format of, uh, of coming to this higher consciousness, to this nirvana, to this uh, place of enlightenment. So I'd like to uh, speak of four of the issues that I think are perhaps most prevalent in the church today. And I don't claim to be an authority on some of them. I think a couple of them I know very well because I got so caught in the New Age movement. And oftentimes I think it comes out of the hurts of life 
Um, we had a real alcohol issue in my family, and so I grew up uh, rejecting the church and authority uh, and all that it represented, and it took me a while to come back. And when I did, again, I wanted to find this healing inside, and so I thought, well, like the New Agers, that if I could find a technique or a practice, then I would come to find my own healing. And I could heal myself. And again, the understanding of that, although I wouldn't have named it as such, is that if I can heal myself, then I must be God. Who needs a God if all I need to do is find some information, knowledge, technique, practice that is going to un unlock whatever hurt, whatever brokenness I have, and that in that I'm going to find healing, there's going to be resurrection. And I don't need to follow all those rules and regulations. And I got caught big time. Um, the other thing that I didn't mention here, and oftentimes I don't, we talked about it before uh, with uh, Barbara and, and Keith and Russ, uh, 12 steps. 12 steps of, of uh, yeah, again. And I, I will talk about that um, in a moment. The first one is um, the whole thing of mantras. And I think in Ottawa, I don't know how many parishes, because we have in our diocese, uh, you know, wonderful communities, but so many of our parishes, so many of our people are caught in new age. And it doesn't mean that they're bad, it doesn't mean that they're monsters, it only means that they're caught. And um, I know that there are bishops and cardinals who, who practice new age practices. And again, it's not that they're not sincere and good men, but like all of us, we can get caught. I, I felt when I came back to the church, even as a priest, um, I was establishing um, um, divine or um, mantra, uh, mantra communities, uh, Christian communities in the diocese. But I, I felt, I mean, I was a, a somewhat sincere priest and, and, and doing the best that I could. I don't want to name names in a sense because I, I think we talk about issues but not people. But I, I think I do want to mention this one particular form of meditation and it was established by a Benedictine monk named John Main. And I think he, is a, he was a wonderful man, a very brilliant man, a great teacher, and again, I think a very sincere and honest uh, searcher for truth. And, and I think he, he, he did bring um, some real good to the church, but he too got caught because it is so insidious. And it's just so close to being the truth. And that's what Lucifer is all about. His name is Lucifer. He is light, right? He's the angel of light, so he can make it look like it's light, but it's just a little bit off. And before you know it, you're, you're way down the road. So John Maine himself, before becoming a Benedictine monk, um, was in the British Foreign Services. And uh, while he was in Kuala Lumpur, he met an Indian Swami who introduced him to... Uh, a technique of saying a mantra. Now he said to John Main, because you're Christian, you can just take a Christian word and apply it uh, to the technique. And that's what he did. So he suggested you use the word Maranatha, the Aramaic word, the language that Jesus spoke, which means come Lord Jesus. But the danger there, and I think John Main got caught in the reality that if you take an Eastern practice and apply a Christian word, it's still an Eastern practice. It would be like if I were to say, well, I'm going to start smoking marijuana, but when I smoke marijuana, I'm going to pray the rosary. <laughs> so that makes smoking marijuana a Catholic thing to do. No. It's an Eastern technique, and no matter what word you apply to it, it's still an Eastern technique. The other thing that John Main said was that, as the Swami had taught him, that the only thing that was really necessary, because it really didn't matter what word you chose, that you just listen to the sound that the word makes. So again, he chose Maranatha. So you would say in your mind, Maranatha. And after a while, you would stop saying the word and you would start listening to the word. And that's when the meditation really begins. And then the more you listen to it, the more the word takes you down into the center of yourself. But the language of that is, if I am taken to the center of myself, do I not become 
self-centered. And there, and there we are in this whole understanding of, of New Age that it truly is all about me. John Main said that he used John Cassian, who we would say is really the spiritual director for St. Benedict. And in his 10th conference on prayer, John Cassian says that the, the, the use of a phrase, the repetition of a phrase, would help to quiet the mind. So John Main interpreted that as a mantra. But what John Cassian had said was that the phrase that he suggested that be used would be the phrase that we use for divine office. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. That's a prayer. Mm -hmm. That's a prayer. That's different than listening to the sound that a word makes. And, And really, if you look at it plainly, it is clear to see that. That is a prayer that's taking me, yes, inside myself, but outside of myself, within myself. Outside of myself to the God who is within. It's not taking me to the center of me. It's taking me out of me into Christ. And so there's the the subtle uh, difference in this whole understanding of, of mantra. And yet there are millions, or maybe not millions, but it seems like it, of people... Um, practicing um, Christian meditation and using a, a mantra around the world. Many, many uh, groups in, uh, in Ottawa. The followers now of John Main are very much involved uh, with Buddhism. They're in great dialogue with the Dalai Lama. Well, of course. It's, a new, it's a, an Eastern technique. So they are going to be taken then back to the East. And that's where they're going. And from my understanding is there is a rejection of the, of the church, of the Catholic Church and its teachings in, in all of that. So that's, um, that is uh, meditation. Yoga, I think, is the one that uh, really, uh, is it becoming the eighth sacrament of the church? I'm not sure, but it's uh, even in Catholic uh, schools in Ottawa, I don't know what it's like down here, but in Ottawa, uh, Catholic schools using yoga, many, many of our Catholic parishes a sponsor, they may not lead it, but they, they sponsor and uh, allow yoga groups to, to practice uh, in, the, in the parishes. Again, I'm not a, an expert in yoga. I did try it for a little while in my, in my new age days. But it really is about using practices and forms and positions that then would help to unlock the energy and the spirit that is inside of us by coming to a silence and a calming um, that we can then open up uh, that which is inside of us. The whole practice of yoga goes back thousands of years uh, to ancient practices of worshipping uh, pagan gods. And a lot of the, of the positions that are used are exactly that. They are positions of prayer uh, to pagan gods. So I have people, uh, when I give the talk, who come up to me and say, yeah, but I, I just go for the stretching. Well, if you just go for the stretching, then that's not yoga. But can you um, sort of swallow the medicine without swallowing the philosophy? Can you go and enter into this stretching and into the positions without, ne- without getting taken into the philosophy? I think it's, it's dangerous. It really is dangerous if you think that you can. We are meant to worship. God created us for that, to worship him. And we worship him, not because he needs it, but because we need it. Because when we worship God, we are taken out of ourselves. We are taken out of ourselves into him. That's what worship is all about. So again, the the New Age movement is saying that, uh, that this is all about me being taken into myself. And so again, there's an element of my breathing in all of this uh, practice of yoga. So in every single practice of New Age, you're going to see this huge element of it being all about me. 